Hey, 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 what is going on, everyone? Well, I'm so glad you have took your time to spend with me right here today. I am your co-host for the MRB Wrestling Review Show, Mike McRock Wilson, and last night was TNA Impact Wrestling in Viva Las Vegas. That's right, Las Vegas, Nevada hosted TNA, and the show kicked off last night with Austin Aries. He was excellent on the microphone last night, and he's also really smart. Because he wanted to cash in that chance for the for a shot at the World Heavyweight Championship by cashing in his X Division Championship match, which he scammed his way into uh, from last week's uh, episode, imposing that suicide. Now, I like that you know you know his uh, sense of urgency wanting to cash in is all well and good, but when Hulk Hogan came out and made the announcement that. Suicide has now changed his name to Manic. I was like, really? Really, Hulk? The mystery is already gone. We all know that TJ Perkins is Suicide, so there's really no need to change Suicide's gimmick, his name, to Manic. There's absolutely no need for that because the mystery is just gone. Uh, the whole thing should have been... Okay, Austin Aries, that was all well and good. It should have been just TJ Perkins as TJ Perkins wanting to get his revenge on Austin Aries when he uh, uh, took him up backstage. That's all. Logic, TNA, logic. Alright, logic. And, uh, you know, with all that said, you know, and then Chris Saban coming out, excellent on the mic, got his point across. Well, wanting to regain his exhibition championship, so it's kind of foreshadowing maybe some sort of payoff, and uh, which I will actually get to right now. And the uh, funny thing is, is that when uh, Austin Aries decided to give up the exhibition uh, championship belt uh, away, you know, you saw Hulk Hogan, you know, holding the belt. When and when everyone got out of the ring, so it just felt like it was like, vac okay, what happened? Did the title just vacate, or is Austin Aries the champ? And we finally got that answer when Austin Aries came out with the X Division champ. So it it was kind of left with a void, you know, just throughout that you know first few hour and forty five minutes of the show until Austin Aries came out with the X Division champ. Okay, he is the X Division champ, so that was a little awkward, but. Um, Here's where it gets interesting. Um, uh, earlier in the show, Aces and Eights, you know, even though they were kind of bickering backstage, Doc and Anderson and Bully and uh, Wes Briscoe, you know, there's going to be some sort of tension building up to, you know, the uh, you know the, you know the group splitting. Even though that's going to bound to happen, um, I uh, like that. Uh, Aces and Nates and Bully Ray, the world champ, you know, will do anything to make sure that no one faces Bully Ray so he would remain the world champ. So, you know, it, it would make sense for uh, Aces and Eights to come out of ringside for the main event to make sure no one wins the Exhibition Championship, right? Perfect. So, logic. Smart. From Aces and Eights, they come out of ringside and uh, try to uh, interfere in the match. When they took out Manic, power bombed him, put him on a stretcher, and this is where it gets interesting. Main Event Mafia comes out, even the odds, and now it's a one on one match for the X Division champ. And here's the interesting thing about that uh, you know, we see all these triple threat matches, number one contenders, X Division matches, X Division championship matches. Every match is a triple threat. You know what? They'll get boring after a while. So, I like the little switch, you know, the interesting little switch and, uh, you know, uh, stuff like that uh, happening. One-on-one, -on -one, Austin Aries, Chris Saban, excellent payoff at the end. Chris Saban gets the victory over Austin Aries, and uh, he will now get a shot for Bully Ray's World Championship in two, in two weeks on TNA. And... Now, the funny thing is that throughout this whole thing, it just felt like that the X Division Championship match was in the middle of this Aces and Eights and uh, Main Event Mafia War. 
And and the funny thing is, is that uh, it really didn't come off as oh, this is in the middle of a something else, a story within a story with a sub story in it. it. Actually created a great flaw, so there was really nothing bad that came out of it. Also last night on TNA Impact. AJ Styles went one on one with Kazarian in a Battle for Glory series match, and AJ Styles won via tap out. Again, sets the bar. He got 10 points. He's got 13 points right now. And, uh, <clears throat> now, the. <laughs> Kaz and Daniels coming out with those ridiculous outfits. Uh, everything about bad uh, influence is just great, you know. Whatever they do. Whatever they wear, whatever they say is always excellent on TNA. And with that said, the AJ Styles, God love him. He's got his new character, but now he needs a storyline to, you know, build his character. But the funny thing is, what can you do with a lone wolf to, you know, how, how far can that lone wolf character go? And the answer to that question is, make a storyline. So that's the only thing that's really not, you know, the, the whole thing with him and Ace and Ace kind of dropped, but it, I think it needs to be brought back to life. But with that said, I'm glad AJ got the victory. Keep it going, AJ. Uh, love to see AJ win the Battle for Glory series, and hopefully it happens. Uh, also, that's night. Nice. Mickey James, uh... Uh, last night uh, was uh, promoting the Gail Kim and Terry Terrell match. Interesting because we didn't see Gail Kim or or Terry Terrell on t on TNA last night, but we also some saw a video package of a preview for their ladder match. Whoever faces Mickey James for the Knockouts Championship, and here's the interesting thing: Mickey James promoted the match, so. And uh, right now, uh, Mickey James is on top of the Knuckles Division. Uh, been a long time coming. And uh, with an excellent execution of a heel turn, Mickey James can't go wrong right now. And so, with that said, I think out of the, the number one contenders match, uh, I can't see Gail Kim winning because, you know, it'll be heel versus heel. Uh, Terry Terrell. Maybe two Super a Championship match. I don't know, but I'm leaning towards Terry Terrell being number one contender. Or it could result into a triple threat match somehow. So either way, it'd be perfect for the Knockouts division. Also, that's the gut check. Um, now, to uh, clarify some of the rules, when uh, Al Snow uh, and... Uh, the other couple guys, uh, Bruce Pitchard and the uh, trainer of OVW, had the two of them, you know, O'Reilly and Adam Howe, you know, one of them will go on to advance, but they're not, you know, the rules are, whoever advances has to face gut check. So, there's a little, I, 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 I understand, you know, some of the audience here is getting a little mixed up to say, oh, he got it? No, he has to go through gut check. So, Ryan Howe went through gut check last night. And, uh, got two no's. One yes and two no's. Uh, he never went through. But here's the, uh, thing that really failed out of that. Was that last week, you know, the one-on-one -on -one match with Ryan Howe and O'Reilly was a lose-lose situation because of that result of Ryan Howe not getting a contract. And so, like I said, it's a lose-lose situation. There was really no point of having that gut check two weeks in a row. And the funny thing is now is that I understand that um, some of the gut check winners have now been uh, released from TNA uh, due to some uh, uh, cuts and uh, money costs and stuff like that. So there's really no point of gut check anymore. Uh... The uh, I really don't know why uh, uh, the it just became a big flop for TNA, um, and the only thing saving it well not really saving it you know the you know the uh, open fight night it's an alright concept but it'll get boring after a while so maybe this will be the end of gut check who knows 
uh, hopefully something will save it, <laughs> to uh, say the least. Uh, also last night, Kurt Angle uh, tells the audience, you know, ba backstage when they were going in, that the fourth member will be revealed. <clears throat> the funny thing is about that, I would rather be surprised. Uh, the, the funny thing is, uh, just before, you know, the fourth guy was revealed, I would rather be surprised, you know, without Kurt Angle telling us, you know, the fourth member will be revealed. Simple as that, right? And it ended up being Magnus as the fourth member. And, uh, and then shortly after all, Superstars got on the microphone and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, um, and, uh, and the funny thing is, introducing Samoa Joe as the third guy, getting his own entrance. I think I, I would rather have, you know, Samoa Joe coming out with Sting and Kurt Angle because the audience already knows who the third member was, even if they didn't see last week. So, and so uh, with that said, being this the fourth member, I don't mind it. Uh... It gives Magnus something, as well. He's in the Bad for Glory series. You know, he's the guy in the lead right now. He's the guy setting the bar. And the interesting thing is, is that both Magnus and Joe are in the Bad for Glory series. And what if it ha happens to happen to come down to Samoa Joe and Magnus while they're in the main event mafia? So there's going to be some sort of interesting dynamic that could foreshadow within the weeks and months to come. Uh, also last night, uh, Jay Bradley went one-on-one -on -one with Hernandez with Chavo Guerrero at ringside. And I'm surprised that Hernandez actually allowed Chavo to be ringside uh, for this match. Uh, well, you know, because, you know, they're still a team, right? But now scenes have been planted uh, for a Battle for Glory match at Battle for Glory and some sort of rivalry going on with Chavo and Hernandez when Chavo... Uh, cost the you know jay bradley the match uh, but hernandez didn't see chavo interfering so this could all lead to a one-on-one -on -one confrontation until hernandez catches chavo interfering in his path of glory series match and it's sort of reminiscent to the rad and jerry lynn uh confrontation a couple of years ago Throughout the Battle for Glory series, but I like this little twist that's going to take place now with Chavo and Hernandez. I'm interested to see where this is going right now. And it's too bad where Hernandez uh, won because Jay Bradley was kind of caught in the middle of this Chavo and Hernandez thing. Could have been anyone else. Could have been Joseph Park, which I'll get to later on uh, with this match against Jeff Hardy. But um, you know, it, it does kind of suck that Jay Bradley had to be in the middle of that. So, even though he lost uh, a little momentum, it really doesn't hurt him because he still has a Battle for Glory series, a couple of more months, you know, to build himself and establish himself as a uh, TNA superstar. Uh, also last night, Robbie E. and Jesse, uh, they are known as the Bromans, and they faced uh, uh, James Storm and Gunner. And, uh, uh, oh, man, the bromance, really? <laughs> I mean, I can understand it. I, I would rather them be called the bro dudes because Jesse likes to say dude and Robbie E likes to say bro. I would rather that, but I can understand why they uh, name their tag team name the bromance because it's so ridiculous just like they are. You know, so excellent logic, you know, to say the least, right? You know, the tag team name is ridiculous as as Robbie, E, and Jesse. And and the cool thing is is that I like this team even though they are ridiculous. <laughs> so it's kind of like a bad influence. Even though they're a bad influence light, I like this team. And the only thing that didn't come out of that is that they didn't win this match. I, I would rather have the Bromans win a non-title match to foreshadow a tag team championship match. So... Uh, you know, the that kind of didn't happen, but 
Well, what I did like was that uh, Storm and Gunner, you know, used a tag team maneuver to beat the Brawlands. All they need now is a name for their team. James Storm and Gunner. What do you call them? Comment below. Let me know. <laughs> and uh, that was my review for uh, uh, Tina Impact Wrestling. Oh, and uh, just uh, before I uh, finish this up, uh, next week... Aces and Nates will uh, go in for a club vote to see who will be the uh, VP of Aces and Nates. I think it's leaning towards Mr. Anderson being the VP of Aces and Nates because if that happens, they will really piss off Doc and something will happen. Something will give. Doc will split from the Aces and Nates and let him build his character. Smart, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm really out of lots of words, you know, but you get the idea, you know, a Anderson becomes VP, Doc don't like it, uh, he attacks Anderson, and there's some sort of tension between the two of them within the uh, club group, so we'll see what happens next week on TNA Impact Wrestling. I'm your co-host for the MIB Wrestling Review Show, Mike McGrath Wilson, and to all your viewers watching, get plenty of rest. And always do your best.